2021. 2021. We're doing shit different. We're different. We're not putting up with just anything. Okay? You don't gotta be telling me I'm late. I know I'm late. Hey y'all. Welcome back to another Wednesday. You are here with me for Wind Down Wednesdays. If you are new to my channel, welcome sweetheart. If you are returning, welcome back. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell for post notifications so you do not miss another one of my uploads cause it's late over here. Okay, okay. Y'all already know. I got my wine glass. I got my wine. You already know it's wine down Wednesdays, but we just come, we wind down, and we talk about any and everything. We just take a load off, undress, let your head down, or put it in the boiling and lock it, and just take a load off. So the first topic that I have for you guys is having sex on the first night. Now, um, this is a very touchy subject, I feel like. I feel like having sex on the first night isn't bad, but personally, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have sex with anybody on the first night of meeting them. Um, it's just too much going on in this world and you know not to judge people who do have sex on the first night I feel like a lot of people judge people who have sex with people on the first night and they basically call them hoes they basically call them you know sluts and they just have this image of a person that has sex on the first night me per se I don't think that make you a hoe because you have sex on the first night I just feel like Maybe you had a sexual connection with that person and you trust them enough to be sexually active with them the first night that you meet them. Now granted, you have two situations when you are having sex on the first night. You could have been talking to this person but you've never seen them in person. Um, and then you have like blind dates where you just go out on a date with somebody and you know you have a sexual connection with them. I per se would not do it. I feel like um, I wouldn't do it, but I'm not judging people who do have sex on the first night. <sighs> the next topic I have is losing your virginity. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about when I first lost mine. I lost mine at 17 years old and I wish I would have kept it, you know, because nine times out of 10, you're not going to end up with the person that you, you lose your virginity to. Now, you do have those people that do end up with the person that they lost their virginity to and they've been together for years, but nine times out of 10, you're not going to end up with the person you you lose your virginity too. You're not. So I tell girls, you know, I have a little cousin and I have sisters and you know younger than me and stuff like that. And the best advice I can give them is wait as long as you can. You get what I'm saying? It's not worth it. Just wait as long as you can. Um losing your virginity really isn't worth it. It's really not. Um it's not fun. It's just really not worth it. So I tell girls younger than me all the time, wait as long as you can because once it's gone, it's gone and you can't get it back. And then now you stuck, you know, thinking that dang, I could have waited because now I'm not even with this person no more. So I feel like wait as long as you can. If you feel like you are ready and also don't let nobody tell you when you are ready and when you're not ready if you feel like you are ready by all means necessary do what you have to do now i'm not saying 
just go out and have sex with anybody. I'm saying if you are ready, don't let nobody tell you that you're not ready. But I feel like if you are ready or if you think you're ready, have a long, 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 long conversation with yourself and really think about are you really ready? Because I know some of us, you know, we in high school, you know, well, I'm not, but I know some high schoolers that, you know, they go through hormones and they feel like they're ready, but then they don't know. So I really feel like you should just sit to yourself and think, am I really ready to give up Pandora's box? Also, do not let nobody peer pressure you into losing your virginity. If you are not ready, then you are not ready. You are worth waiting for, okay? Don't have a guy sit up here and peer pressure you into having sex with him because he's telling you he loves you and you the only girl for him. Don't fall for it, y'all. Just don't fall for it. Because I fell for them exact words and I look at me. I'm not even with the person I lost my virginity to. So just wait as long as you can. Um and just really sit and think because once you lose your virginity you can't get it back you can't just think long and hard before you decide to make that big step that's how i feel the next topic being comfortable around your significant other and when i say be comfortable around your significant other i mean farting around them you know being naked around them really just letting loose you know around just and if the other now i have friends that tell me stories about how they use the bathroom in front of their significant other um they fart on their significant other or around their significant other they walk around naked around their significant other and that's cool and all but see me i'm a very reserved person i've always been reserved um and I just never like, you know, I just never been the type of person. I feel like I don't have to announce it. I feel like that's where a lot of people get it confused. I am comfortable, but I feel like I don't have to announce it. Like I don't have to announce the fact that I gotta go do my business. I don't have to announce the fact that, oh, I gotta fart, so I'm just finna go ahead and fart on you. Like, no, like, I feel like I don't have to announce that. My ex that I was with for three years, he literally would question me and ask me, are you holding it? Like, when we around each other, or do you even go to the bathroom? Yes, I do, but I just don't announce it because I feel like I'm a lady. I don't have to announce when I gotta go number two. I don't have to announce when I have to fart, okay? And as far as like walking around naked, I don't mind walking around naked. I'm just, the most you would see out of me is me in a big t-shirt and some underwear. That's the most. I don't, I'm not the type of person to just walk around the house naked. I'm just a very reserved person. That's just always been me. But yeah, I'm just a very reserved person. Not to knock anybody who's comfortable around their significant other. And I know somebody's gonna look at this video and be like, well, if you can't do all of that, then you're not comfortable around your significant other. No, I'm very, if I'm with somebody, I, I, I can be very comfortable around that person, but I'm just not gonna announce every little thing. Okay, it's a difference. So the next topic I have is submission. Submitting to your uh, boyfriend or husband. Now this topic is a touchy topic as well because some people feel like when you submit to a man, that means you're basically doing what that man tells you to do. No, that's not doing what a man tells you to do. How I look at it, a man is supposed to lead and you're supposed to follow. That's how I look at it. Submission doesn't mean that, oh, I'm, you know, you just tell me what to do and you just boss me around all day and I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do. Submission is, you know, 
taking charge. Like, I like for my man to take charge. I, I don't know about y'all, but I like for my man to take charge. You get what I'm saying? Like, sometimes women just want their men to take charge. Like, tell me what we gonna eat today. You get what I'm saying? I like when my man calls me and be like, Babe, I'll take you out on a date today. Be ready by 7 o'clock. Okay, babe. You ain't gotta tell me twice. I like I like stuff like that. No, like I just I just like for a man to take charge. Like, you know, just take charge sometimes. Like, you figure out what we what we going to eat. I hate when a guy tells me, "Oh, babe, I want to take you out on a date today." Okay, what we doing? I don't know what you want to do. Hi, you tell me you want to take me out on the date and you don't know what we doing why i gotta figure that out like put in effort like women love when a man take charge okay that doesn't ne necessarily mean that they're bossing the female around or they're telling the female what to do but i like for a man to be a man to me that's what i like you get what i'm saying i cook and i clean up you take out the trash okay I had a conversation with um, some friends the other day and I basically stated that if you can't change a tire, if you can't, you know, take my car to get an oil change, if you can't clean my car for me, wash my car and clean my car out from inside and out, I feel like you're not the man for me. And my dad has always told me, if you got a boyfriend, and I still gotta wash your car, and I still gotta look at your car when something wrong, and that is not the man for you. And I always took that and I ran with it. I feel like most of these men want you to cook for them, they want you to clean for them, they want you to wash their dirty underwear, they want you to rub them down when they going to sleep at night and stuff like that, rub their back and stuff. But you don't wanna change the tire. You don't wanna do something as simple as taking out the trash. But you want me to cook for you? You want me to clean for you? No. I feel like, for me, it turns me on like when a man is doing man things. Like for me, that really turns me on. When you just being a man and you just doing things that a man do, that'll only make me submit to you even more. Like that'll make me want to cook for you that'll make me want to clean for you if you are providing if you are doing what a man is supposed to do then i got i got my part in it i'll cook for you all day i'll clean for you all day that'll naturally come because you're doing what my man is supposed to be doing to provide for me and to you know do what a man is supposed to do so uh, it's only right that i return the favor that's what we mean by submission like that's just what we mean. Be a man. Do what men are supposed to do. And some some guys just feel like that's just so hard. Well, I could cook for myself. I could clean for myself. So I don't need a woman to do it. But y'all can't change a tire. Y'all, first of all, if I got a man in the car with me and I gotta change my own tire, if I got a man in the car with me and I gotta pump my own gas, are you really a man? I've seen so many instances where I've seen a girl pump her own gas and the dude is sitting right there either in the driver's seat or either in the passenger seat. And if he in the driver's seat, that's a problem for me. That is a problem for me. If you do what a man is supposed to do, I promise you your woman is going to submit to you. And women, stop trying to be alpha women. Please stop trying to be alpha women. We got some alpha women out there that feel like, oh, I don't need a man to do this for me. Or I don't need a man to cook for me. I don't need a man to pay my bills. I don't need a man to buy me this. I don't need a man to do this for me. I could take my own car to get service. So, okay, you do that. I like to have one less thing on my mind. If my man is telling me, babe, I'm finna go take your car to get cleaned out. Here you go, here you go the keys. Babe, I'm taking your car to go get service. Okay, let me know when you finish. <laughs> I like having one less thing on my mind to have to worry about. And then boom, here comes the submission. 
if you just do what a man is supposed to do and put in effort, I promise you, treat me right, I'll treat you better. That's always my motto. You treat me right, you do what a man is supposed to do for his woman, I promise you, you get whatever you want. You want a home cooked meal? All right, cool. You have a home cooked meal. You want me to rub you back down at night? All right, cool. I'll rub you back down at night. But you got to give me something in return. And I'm a drink today. <sighs> All right, y'all. So the next topic is breakups. Um, this person really wasn't specific about like what to talk about in breakups, but I'm just gonna talk about the gist of a breakup. When you're going through a breakup. That is your time to be vulnerable and emotional. I know some of us don't like it. Some of us don't like to have to bear pain and stuff like that. So we use other things to kind of cope with it. But you definitely have to go through that pain. And if you don't go through that pain, you will not heal. You will still have that pain somewhere in the back of you. And you won't heal. I've been in a situation where I would talk to other guys like i would go through a breakup and i would talk to other guys to get over the guy that i you know had a breakup with and i had to learn that that is not going to fix anything i'm still going to be hurt i'm still going to think about that person sometimes i'm still going to be checking that person's page to see what they doing what they talking about who they talking to if they have moved on and stuff like that so you cannot use other people and other things to cope with the pain of a breakup. You have to go through it. Breakups are not easy. They never are. And if they are easy, then that person, you definitely wasn't in love with that person. Um, and that's just that on that. Like, period. Like, you have to go through a breakup. You have to, you have to go through that pain. But then you have to pick yourself up one day and boss up that's all there is to it you can cry as long as you want to cry it's going to be some days where you want to cry all day you just want to lay in the bed and just not even do nothing and be in this depressive stage and then you have those days where you know you just wake up on the right side of the bed and you know you want to go do something to take your mind off things and stuff like that and that's okay do things that'll take your mind off of it do hobbies, you know, write down your pain. I did this thing where I wrote down my emotions on a plate. I used a Sharpie and I wrote down, you know, all of my emotions on the plate. And once I was done, I broke the plate and that felt good. I felt like I was letting go in a sense. Like, I think the hardest part about a breakup is letting go. I think that's the hardest part. Now, if the person made it easy for you to let go, then I definitely don't think that's the hardest part. I think the hardest part is moving on because it's like, dang, like, now I got to start over with somebody. I got to re, you know, re-get to know somebody and stuff like that. And that's the scary thing because it's just like, you don't know if you're stepping into heaven or hell. So I think the hardest part is moving on and letting, well, for me, the hardest part is letting go. Um, it's not hard for me to move on, but I feel like it's definitely hard for me to let go, especially when you've given this person your time and your energy and your love and your support. It's definitely hard to let that person go, even if they dogged you out, even if they wasn't in your best interest, even if they didn't have your heart at best interest. It's definitely hard to let that person go because it's like you kind of question yourself in a sense like, Dang, like I did everything right for this person. Now you thinking like, what did I do wrong or what didn't I do right? Like you start questioning yourself, even though you was the best thing to this man. <coughs> you start questioning yourself like, dang, what did I do? Why, you get what I'm saying? Like, what did I do? But sometimes, People just wake up and decide they don't want to be with you no more. And you have to, you know, real, you have to really come to terms with that. You have to come to terms. And 
I think a lot of breakups, I feel like when you get cheated on and you feel like you have to leave that person, that's hard. I feel like when you feel like you have to leave that person, not necessarily because of cheating, but I feel like if you know in the back of your head that dang, I gotta leave this person alone or they're gonna keep doing me dirty and they gonna keep doing what they doing to hurt me and you know, and I have my best interest at heart, that hurts worse because it's like, dang, I don't want to leave you, but I feel like if I don't leave you, I'm going to still be going through this pain and hurt. You can also feel alone while with somebody. You can definitely feel alone while with somebody. And I think that's the worst feeling too. When you feel alone in a relationship, that person is supposed to be your safe zone. That person is supposed to be your comfort. That person is supposed to be the person that you go to when you need a, a shoulder to cry on. But for you to feel alone while you're with this person, that's a problem for me. So I feel like breakups are never easy. You just have to go through them. And I know we hate going through breakups because it's not the easiest thing to go, to, go through. But, I mean, you'll eventually get through it. You'll eventually get through it. And then... By the time you get through it and you realize your worth, you definitely are going to look at that person and be like, why was I so in love with you? Why was I so crazy of you? I literally look at some people that I gave my attention and time to, and I just be like, why was I ever so in love with you? What, what was I thinking? It's crazy. It's real crazy. Baby, I gotta drink out the bottle for that one because that was just. <sighs> Ooh, yeah. So my next and final topic is good guys slash girls with toxic traits. This can happen. This can really happen. You have some good girls that has dealt with toxic people before and that made them toxic they only know those toxic ways they only know how to be toxic um but they're really good people at the end of the day they know how to love they know how to care for you they know how to you know be your person but they have their ways and their flaws that are considered toxic like for me for example i'm a i'm a good person I'm a really good person. I have a really good personality. Um, I love hard in a relationship when I'm in a relationship. I take care of the person that I'm with because I grew up around love. So that's all I know. So I tend to love people that are toxic um, and that only instill some toxic traits into me, like my bad attitude. Um, Sometimes, like, I get in my attitudes and I don't want to talk and I don't want to communicate with you until I'm ready. And I have to learn how to stop doing that because that can, be, that can push a person away. That could really push a person away when you have these toxic traits, but you know you're a good person. Um, that could really push a person away. And it's just like when they get further enough and you don't realize that you're pushing that person away then you're questioning like why are you leaving me like i was a good person to you you pushed me away because you were being toxic and really didn't realize it and if you are dealing with a person that is a good person to you but they have toxic ways don't leave that person because sometimes they don't know so okay sorry y'all my camera died but back in action so before my camera died we were talking about um toxic guys versus uh, uh good girls slash guys that are with toxic traits so like i was saying like sometimes <clears throat> sometimes when you're a good person and you've been dealing with people that are toxic you kind of pick up those traits and sometimes you don't know that you're toxic sometimes you don't know that you're being toxic so if you're dealing with the person that is I won't say is toxic, but it's have those toxic traits, but you know that they are good people at the end of the day and that they are showing you the right type of love. Then I say talk to those people, communicate it with them. Sometimes they don't know, especially like me. I know that I have toxic traits and I know that sometimes 
I can do things to push people away, but I would rather for that person, my significant other, to let me know that instead of just leaving and, you know, things like that, let me know, help me. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's a part of growing with each other and building each other up is not necessarily making them a problem, but and not necessarily calling out the problem, but just kind of telling them like, hey, like, you know, you're becoming toxic. Like you're you're doing things to me because you feel like I'm gonna be like all the other people, but I'm like, reassure them. If you're like me, you need reassurance all the time. You need reassurance, like you need consistency. So try not to leave the people that are good people and you know the ones that do have like some toxic traits and stuff like that don't leave those people because sometimes they don't know that they're being toxic sometimes that's all they know because they all only dealt with toxic people so you could be good and you can also have some type of toxic traits so yeah but also know your worth and know that if this person is continuously being toxic towards you, be okay with leaving with that person. Because if you let them know, like, and you're showing them that, oh, okay, like, I sh I'm trying to, like, I've been proving to you that I'm not like these other people, but yet you're still being toxic to me. I done already told you that, you get what I'm saying? I done already had this conversation with you, but if you keep being toxic towards me, I ain't got no choice but to leave because you just not finna be toxic towards me just because you feel like you can and you feel like I'm not gonna leave. 2021! 2021! We're doing shit different! We're doing stuff different, okay? We're doing it different. We're not putting up with just anything, okay? We're being different. We're doing things different all 2021. And that's all I gotta say. But thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to come back next week for another Wind Down Wednesdays. And also, I will be uploading another video this weekend for you guys. And until next time, bye everybody.